Hi, I'm Jen with The Medicine Journal. Now, if you've ever smoked marijuana, you've probably had an incident like this. You watch the entire Lord of the Rings trilogy, all the while sitting on your sofa, sucking on a Slurpee, eating a box of Twizzlers, and eating a jar of peanut butter with your fingers. Now, why does this happen? Why do we smoke pot and then have an increased appetite? It appears to be a combination of several things. First of all, you have an increase in your smell, which in turn allows your food to taste better. There's then an upsurge in the release of a neurotransmitter dopamine, and through a complex mechanism of how our body deals with hunger, a production of an appetite-stimulating hormone called ghrelin. Marijuana and its active ingredients, cannabinoids, can affect the brain in several different ways. The cannabinoid that's responsible for the memory killing high is called tetrahydrocannabinol, also known as THC. There's at least 85 different cannabinoids present in marijuana and each of them can exhibit varied effects on the body. To better understand THC's role in feeling famished, let's look at what normally stimulates our appetite. Now hunger is thought to have a two-part mechanism that flip-flops when the body senses an increase or a decrease in energy stores. If it senses a decrease, it will trigger release of ghrelin, which causes the sense of hunger. Interestingly, THC also affects the part of the brain that helps in the release of a feel-good neurotransmitter called dopamine. Conversely, if there's an excess in energy stores, your fat cells will release the hormone called leptin. This stimulates your hypothalamus to inhibit your hunger. And leptin is also known to affect your dopamine release. Leptin counteracts the effects of a neurotransmitter called anandamide. Anandamide is a potent hunger stimulator that binds to the same receptor sites as THC. Decreased leptin causes increased hunger when THC binds with anandamide's receptors. Now, all of these hormones and neurotransmitters cause a person to feel more starving than an activist during a hunger strike. In 2014, however, there was a study that suggests there is another mechanism responsible for a person feeling hungry. They found that THC does increase your ability to smell, and the way that it works is it binds to the receptors in your main olfactory bulb, also known as your mop. This increased ability to smell simultaneously makes your food taste better. The way that this works is as you chew your food, you tend to force air through your nasal passage. This allows the food to carry through and actually gives you the ability to grasp more complex flavors. Now, without this taste and smell combination, you'd be limited to taste sensations that are created by chemicals. Those would be sweet, sour, salty, bitter, and ugami. THC increases your hunger by affecting the receptor site CB1. Once it's attached, it actually increases the palatability of sucrose and has zero effects on the sensations of salty or bitter. This explains the subjective feelings that sweet foods actually taste better while you're high. CB1 also has the ability to produce dopamine in an area of your hypothalamus. Similar receptor sites in the hypothalamus get stimulated by THC and cause the release of ghrelin. Ghrelin acts in the hypothalamus by increasing your hunger and they actually help prepare your GI tract for food intake. In the end, smoking pot makes you smell better. It also makes you feel like a million dollars because your body releases dopamine. You sense your hunger because of the release of ghrelin and the attachment of THC to the anandamide receptors. It mimics basically the feeling of food deprivation. Now, a combination of all of this makes you feel like a chubby kid on the third day of fat camp. So if you ever smoke pot and have to leave your friend's rerun marathon to run to the store and buy it out to feed that insatiable appetite, don't worry, it's totally normal. Ooh, I've got to go. It's 420.